Hello, kids. Hi. Joe, buddy Jake. What am I drinking? CO2 Energy, also not a sponsor of my channel, although um, I think they want to sponsor me. What am I doing today? That's a good question. I'm not working on a 57 Chevy. Does this look like a 57 Chevy to you? Me neither. I don't think so either. So this is a 2010 F650. It's windy out here, I apologize. Um, and I have taken apart a bunch of junk because it has an exhaust manifold leak. Um, and it whistles when you, uh, when the turbo, when the brake goes on, the exhaust brake goes on, it whistles through the, through the manifold gaskets. Well, it's not leaking from there, or there, or there, or there, any of those six. It's leaking from, I don't know if you kids can see this. Get in there real deep, get in there real good, real good. Right, hold on. Yeah, I can't get the light in there, where's the light, light? <sighs> hold it, hold please, hold. I gotta get the light on it, right? Right there. Can you see it right there, can you see that? That flange is the manifold to the EGR. Well, actually, it's, a, it's an oil cooler for the turbo. That exhaust runs through and water runs through it. Because the EGR tube, that thing right there, goes here and over there from across the front of the motor to that green EGR valve. Goes right around there and this cooler. The back side of it that thing right there hold on hold don't have a seizure that thing is leaking that gasket so here's the deal this gasket shape and that gasket shape are the same and the guy that did this before about oh i don't know three or four months ago maybe five months ago had six of these one two three or five six because there's you know coming through the six ports uh my guess is he replaced all these because one of these was leaking and he took one of the old good ones off of here and put it over there which it blew out it's not the right way to do it kids it's not the right way to do it um it's not the way that that i would do it and so it's i'm getting an egr kit it's about 75 bucks it's going to come with the gaskets for the egr tube that goes here so it comes with like a fiber, here's the EGR. It comes with that gasket there, this bent-up fiber washer gasket thing. That's broken, it comes from there. B-band clamp over to that one, gets one of those, gets a couple other gaskets, gets this gasket here, and a few more things. Why am I not, that's why I'm not working on the 57. So my buddy Pete, who I'm doing the trolley for, he also has his towing company, and this is like uh, one of the holding yards for Coparts. You guys familiar with Coparts? It's a salvage place where wrecked cars go to die. Insurance companies put them up for sale when they're totaled, and uh, body shops and salvage yards bid on them, and that's how you guys get parts in your for your car. Salvage is all these cars will end up in somebody's, uh, you know, they'll end up in somebody's salvage yard. You may get parts off this van or that thing or that thing or one of those you may get parts off those for your car or parts off this jeep maybe rollover theft recovery or whatever that's mine this is not part of it um yeah so i need to clarify something so um in a in a, in a like a co-part yard or a salvage yard or something like this a holding yard Working on a vehicle like on one of these Copart cars or stripping it or something like that is completely not allowed. Um, this was an emergency situation or I would not be in this yard doing this on this truck. We would have it somewhere else, but it, unfortunately that's just not possible today or this time or whatever. And so um, if anybody's watching that's, that's related with Coparts or whatever, please forgive this, uh, what do you call it? trespass or whatever because this is just not how we do business it just isn't done like that here 
Um, we know it's not allowed and, and it's the insurance companies certainly don't want that going on for liability's sake. And so that's not what we're doing here. I just have to fix this truck so it can be done because there's a lot of obligations with these vehicles to be shipped out of here that have to be done. And so I'm um, in order for co-parts to keep their agreement with the insurance companies, the insurance companies to keep their agreement with their customers and on, on, on. I'm doing it right now out here. It's on a, I mean, it's actually a Saturday morning. The truck's down, the yards are down, the port's down. Nothing's coming in and out of here. There's no danger to me or anybody else. And I'm just going to get this truck up and going so the guys can continue and co-parts co here in Hawaii can continue. So um, I just want to add that in there, clarification. Uh, because as I was watching, I went back watching this video, I realized, wait a minute, you know, it sounds like, it looks like this is just what we do all the time. I don't, it doesn't happen. Nobody strips any of these cars. These cars are not to be parted out. They don't, they, the goal is to not damage them any more than they are or remove anything or take anything off because if somebody buys, say someone buys this Jeep on Coparts and this is the, like the, the picture of it that goes up and they get like all the angles. When it leaves here, and get shipped out it's, it needs to be in the same shape as it was when it left here that's the goal for anybody that runs a copart yard or any truck driver or tow truck driver or whatever that is their it's getting windy that that is their their goal and, and kind of their obligation is to make it uh for the customer because you know if i bought a car from coparts if i had a salvage yard and i bought a car and i'm counting on making bucks off of the parts off this thing the last thing i want is a car that's more damaged than it was when i bought it makes sense to me probably makes sense to you so uh, there it is there that's that so back to your regular scheduled program that's what uh, that's what these tow trucks are for and we're at the harbor I don't know if you can see it containers so we're across the fence from the harbor and this truck here this rollback and that yellow Dodge over there are used to go back and forth for the harbor and they grab these vehicles and they haul them back and forth for people who buy them and they ship them out this truck went down yesterday at about noon. It just died. So it has two problems. It has this exhaust leak thing that's been making noise. And uh, it lost a battery. Actually, what, what died is the alternator went out. One phase of the alternator went out. So I gotta put a new one of those on. And that sucked the battery down to where it finally just went and it pulled it down to like five volts. Tried to restart, recharge them up. They would do a surface charge of like 12.6, which is a full full charge because each cell is 2.1 volts on a six six cell battery 12 volt battery so a fully charged battery if you add it up is you know 2.1 equals times six is 12 so it would crank down to like five or seven volts or something when they tried to crank it so the batteries are just done so that's what i'm doing today kids i don't know where if this video is going to come out or where it's going to go I just felt like documenting it so you guys aren't saying, like somebody I know, George, says, why aren't you working on your car? You don't even know what day it is. You don't even know what time it is. It's true, I don't. But this is what happens. You help your friends out. Your friends call and you go help them out. No matter what, what happens. That's just what you do. That's how we do it here. So uh, enjoy the rest of your, rest of your week, weekend. I don't know what day it is. Don't ask me what day it is, George. I don't have too much salt in my ear from surfing. I resemble that remark.